This video is perfect for anyone who doesn't have time to play an entire game, but who wants to hone their skill in finding the best move in any phase of the game. So in this high level game that I'm about to review, you'll have the white pieces and I'll stop at various positions and ask you to find the best move, usually for white, but sometimes for black so that you can also practice spotting the opponent's threats. I've divided up these quiz positions into three levels of difficulty. If you look in the description, there's timestamps so you can jump to whatever difficulty level you like. But you might want to go ahead and watch the whole video because I will be providing commentary throughout the game. All right, let's get started. e4, e5, knight f3, attacking the e5 pawn. Knight c6 defends the pawn, bishop b5 attacks the defender of the pawn, and then a6 by black. This is known as the Rui Lopez opening. Bishop a4 is by far the most common move. Some beginners might think that they can win a pawn with bishop takes c6, d takes c6, knight takes e5. But this is not good for white. Black has a strong response. This is a beginner level position. What would you play as black? Black can get his pawn back immediately with queen d4, attacking the knight, also attacking the pawn. You need to do something about your attack knight, so let's say you move it. Queen takes e4 check. Black has a good position. Also good is queen e7. This move works too, and that knight needs to be defended. Uh, if you move it, again, black takes the pawn. If you protect it, then f6 drives the knight away, and then black takes the pawn as before. So that doesn't really work for white trying to win that pawn. Bishop a4 is what white typically does here, and black will usually play knight f6. Once in a while you may see the move f5. This is intermediate level now. What would you play here as white? The strongest move here is going to be d4. e takes f5 isn't good because e4. Now that knight doesn't really have a good place to go unless you want to move it backwards. You could try queen e2 pinning the pawn, but then queen e7, the pawn's not pinned anymore. You know, e takes, f3 is a threat, so maybe your best option here would be to take out the knight, and then now you can put the knight on the d4 square. But this is actually fine for black. Black can play knight h6, so that if we throw in this check, it can be blocked with knight f7. And black's doing just fine here. This pawn is kind of insecure. It'll probably be one. Black will win it one way or another, attack it with queen f6, and... You know, this isn't great for white. I mean, white's not losing, but best, the winning move is, is d4. So whatever black does here, it's, it's not very comfortable. If you take the pawn, then we're going to take with the knight like this. And if knight takes, this is not looking good for black. You got this open file to the king. This pawn here can be defended with bishop f4. And that pawn's deep into black's position. It's an inconvenience. Knight f6, the natural developing move isn't working. And this is a this is a bad diagonal here. Also, in the other variation, if instead of f takes e4, e takes d4, here we push ahead with e5. And then black just has problems developing here. If you, let's say you go like this, well, the good move here is c3, because now this, you know, black will probably need to take here, unless you want to just allow white to grab that pawn, have another central pawn, so takes, but this helps white get the knight into the game. And again, this diagonal's weak, it's open, and how's black gonna castle? You know, you try this, we're gonna end up, you know, after castle here, put the bishop on b3 so that black can't castle. It's just, it's just a pain. So, yeah, f5 is not a good move, but d4, that might not be the most obvious refutation, uh, so. Knight to f6, white castles, and black will play bishop e7 a lot, of, a lot of the time. Note that knight takes e4 for you beginners that might think this is a free pawn. Well, again, because of the king's position, we can go rook e1 and immediately get our pawn back, attacking the knight. You know, so if the knight moves, we just take on c6, and then we can grab this pawn here. Um, but even better is maybe this move d4. And you don't want to do this as black because now this opens the file to the king and, you know, rook e1. This knight is is starting to get into trouble. So it's, it's not a good, it's not, you know, black didn't win a clear pawn. White's going to get the pawn back one way or another. Or black's going to have a very uncomfortable position. So bishop e7, rook e1. This pawn will eventually need to be defended, so that's why rook e1's played. Bishop b5 attack, or b5 attacking the bishop. Bishop b3. 
d6 by black. Now after this move d6, this is a beginner level question, what should white play here? Okay, d6 was significant because it added protection to this pawn, so that now this knight is no longer tied down to defending that pawn from this knight here, meaning it can jump over here and you know achieve a, bishop, a knight for bishop trade. That's a good trade for black. All else being equal, bishops are slightly stronger than knights, so you want to try to trade your knights for bishops if you can do so without any problems. So here, white needs to play c3. This is the best move. That way, if knight a5 is played, the bishop can drop back here. It has a square. And c3 is the best way to give this bishop an escape square because it also supports d4. We want to play d4 in a minute, and we get our ideal pawn center. A pawn on d4 and a pawn on e4 is known as an ideal pawn center. So white wants to achieve that. Um, black castles here. And now white plays h3. You can play d4 right away, but then black can play this bishop g4 move. And this is kind of annoying. It's undermining the defense of this d4 square. So we're just going to play h3 first. So this bishop can't go to this nice square and, and threaten to eliminate. You know, we said bishop for knight isn't a good trade, but in some cases it's worth it. If this knight is playing a key role in defending our nice, beautiful pawn center, then it might be worth it to pin, at least pin that knight, maybe take it out. So just h3 just stops all that. Knight a5. Black puts his knight to the edge of the board, attacking the bishop, which may seem silly, but, you know, after the bishop drops back, the point of that move was that it clears the way for this move c5. Black wants more central control. He knows that white's going to play d4, so he wants to have more pawns attacking that square. That doesn't stop d4, though. White plays d4 here, and black should not capture multiple times on that square because at the end of the day you're going to get this structure where black has this weak pawn in the center it can no longer be defended by another pawn all of white's pawns can be defended by neighboring pawns so that's this is known as a weak pawn and there's just no reason to do that as black so black normally plays queen c7 here adding some defense to this e5 square here in case black try, white tries to take and win a pawn um, sometimes you might see this move bishop b7, and this is an intermediate level question. What would you play here as white? The strongest move here is just d5. It's a good time to shut down this diagonal now that black has committed his bishop to this diagonal. You know, we're, we're expanding in the center, and now black, this bishop isn't really doing a whole lot. Maybe it will have to develop back to c8 which will have wasted two moves i guess maybe at some point it could go to a6 but that's going to take a few moves so that's just good timing for playing d5 um, it's worth noting that you cannot win a pawn if you thought you could win a pawn here you were mistaken after this and then first of all if you take with the knight then just queen takes rook takes and then the bishop can go here attacking the knight and the knight moves and then black takes here on e4 you might think that taking the queen first works because now that draws, um, or actually it eliminates the possibility of, of black taking on d1 so that this rook will remain on this file. So maybe you think you're winning a pawn here with this move. But unfortunately, this here is another intermediate level question, I suppose. What should black play here? Bishop takes e4, can be played anyway. Black gets the pawn back because if you try to take, take, and take like this, rook d1 check, black will get the piece back with a very un unpleasant position for white. So, you know, that's... Most uh, skilled players probably know about that variation if they play this opening, but in case you're new to this opening, and you know, you might think that's a way to win a pawn. Knight bd2 is played by white here. Uh, here's a beginner level question. What's wrong with bishop e3? Why is that not a good move for white? The answer is that black can play knight c4. And again, we don't want to allow black to trade his knight for our bishop for no good reason. This move also attacks b2, which is undefended. So the only way to address both of these issues is just to move the bishop back to c1. And now white has moved the bishop twice, only to put it back where it started. And the knight is on a better square than it was. So as white, this is not how you want to play chess. It's not a good sequence of moves. 
Okay, so knight bd2 is better. Develop that piece instead. So here black takes on d4, white recaptures, knight c6, you know, attacking d4. So the best way to defend here is knight to b3. You don't want to play this move. You might think this works because now the queen is looking at that square. Okay, do we have enough defenders? No. Knight takes, knight takes, pawn takes. If you take with the queen, of course you lose your bishop. So that queen is not defending that pawn since it's trying to defend the bishop as well. So white will play knight b3 here. Now this pawn is well defended. a5 is what black will play here most of the time. Looking to kick this knight away. So here white wants to play bishop e3 so that when the knight's kicked back to d2, this bishop is now not, not blocked anymore and it's on a better square. It's developed, controlling the center. So a4. Note that knight b4 is just a waste of time for black because the bishop will just move and then the knight at some point will be kicked away. That's not doing anything for black. So a4, attacking the knight. Knight goes to b, knight goes to uh, d2. Now bishop d7 from black. Now suppose black plays a3. This is an intermediate level question. What would you play as white? The best move here is b takes a3. Everything else is bad. Rook takes, then you can go knight b1 hitting the rook. And after the rook moves, maybe you can redeploy the knight to c3, looking at that b5. If he, if he hits like that, then we can jump into d5. That's a good move. But what you don't want to do is play b3. Maybe some players thought that move was possible, but this loses to knight b4. Two pieces attacking that bishop now. And what are you going to do about that? If you go rook c1, well, that doesn't work because knight takes a2, hitting the rook. You're losing. Bishop b1, this runs into queen c3. How are you saving this rook? The queen's going to win that rook anywhere you move the bishop. It's going to be lost. So that's a little bit tricky. You might fall for that if you're not careful. So a3, you got to take. Bishop d7, played by black. And now white plays rook c1, placing the rook opposite. The black queen, that's good. If these pieces move at some point, there could be a tactic against the queen. So black just gets out of the way with queen b7. And now white develops the last piece, queen to e2. Now the rooks are connected. That's always a good thing to do. Rook f to c8, placing the rook on an open file. There's no pawns on that file. It's a good place to put your rooks. Bishop d3, opening the file for the white rook, attacking the pawn on b5 with two pieces. That's good. Rook a, b, 8 defends. Suppose black had played b4. What would you do here? This is a beginner level question. Knight c4. That's a beautiful square for the knight. And you want to put it there. It's exerting pressure on e5. If you wait, d5 is also reasonable. It's pretty good for white, but maybe not quite as good because knight a5. And now if you put the knight on c4, it'll just get taken out. Um, so knight c4 is definitely the way to go. Now suppose black takes on d4. This is an advanced level question. What would you play here as white? The best move here is bishop to f4. We're attacking d6. So if black defends that move, let's say here, we're just going to push forward with e5, attacking the pawn even more. So black probably just needs to take. And then we take like this. This pawn is very weak, and the white pieces are looking very scary here. Uh, a lot of central control here. Black isn't really going to, there's not a good way to hang on to that pawn in the long run. I think it's going to be lost. Um, queen d2 is what the computer is suggesting here. Maybe bishop e6, and then, oh, you can even just take it, because if the queen takes, we got this, this right here. So, yeah, that's... That's the best way for white to play, that bishop f4 move. Not obvious. What else does black have here? I mean, what if you try something like this that just loses? Yeah, doesn't have enough protect. Yeah. So, yeah. If you see b4, remember, well, advanced players are unlikely to see the move b4. But anyway, bishop f4. Okay, so rook a to b8, defended the pawn b3 we're threatening to take here as white and then 
Once black recaptures with this pawn, that clears the c4 square for the knight, so that would be good. There's also ideas of if this pawn moves, the bishop coming to a6 and, you know, winning a rook once the queen moves, uh, winning the exchange. So black just goes ahead and takes out that pawn. The knight takes, and then black takes on d4. What if black played bishop d8 here? This is an intermediate level question. What would, what would you play as white? Best move is d takes e5, knight takes, knight takes, rook takes, rook takes, pawn takes, knight c5, forks the queen and bishop, queen moves, we got knight takes, queen takes, rook c5, hitting this pawn, hitting this pawn. So that's how all that all goes down. Um, was there anything better than taking that rook there? If you just take the pawn, I don't think it makes a difference. We still go knight c5, yeah. So that's what's wrong with bishop d8. e takes d4 is what's played. And then this is the move. I think knight f takes is also decent. And now black plays knight to b4, hitting this bishop. So the bishop goes back to b1. Um, this is a line worth looking at. Rook takes, rook takes, and then this takes, takes, thinking you're winning a pawn, but then knight takes e4. That's why you're not winning a pawn. Okay, so bishop b1 instead, defending, well, that pawn's defended by the queen, but there's more defense now. Okay, so rook takes c1, played by black. If black played knight takes e4, this is an intermediate level question. What would you play as white? The winning move here, well, rook takes c8 check is the best move. a3, you can start with that move too, but rook takes c8 check is best according to the computer. Rook takes, and now here's another spot for intermediate question. What do you play as white here? bishop g5 okay so we got an attack on this bishop here and black loses in all the lines let's look at his options if you take on g5 we're going to take on e7 okay knight takes here knight takes here and black is losing here let's say black tries bishop c6 here's an intermediate intermediate level question what would you play here as white best move bishop takes h7 check King takes, check with the queen, king goes back, knight g5. Now you're in trouble, you do. You have to go here and give up the bishop. Because how are you stopping this? There's no good way. So, yeah, there's all kinds of problems here. Um, I mean, this weak pawn here is, is the least of black's problems. Um, let's say instead you try knight c3 back here. We go queen takes e7. Okay, we just grab that. Um, what else is there? What was the other line here? Bishop takes g5. Bishop takes e4. Okay, that attacks the queen. And then once the queen moves, we can grab this bishop. So this is all very bad for black, losing. So rook takes c1 played instead. And here white goes bishop takes c1. May look a little bit strange. Why not take with the rook, put it on an open file? But white wants to redeploy the bishop over here to the b2 square. That's going to be a better diagonal for the bishop. I think that's the thinking there. Knight c6 played, the knight wasn't doing so much anymore, so it moves back where it's controlling the center more. Bishop b2, as planned, knight takes d4, knight takes d4, rook e8. The point of this move is that black is anticipating white might play knight f5, and this kind of discourages that move. If you play it now, there's takes, takes, and now there's a discovered attack on the white queen like this. Queen moves, takes, takes d5. This is fine. Black's doing pretty well here. Not winning, but it's comfortable. So white just gets out of the way of that. Black plays b4, expanding, opening up this diagonal for this bishop maybe to come in here if this knight moves at some point. Bishop c2. Um, just getting the bishop to a better place. Maybe go to b3 at some point. Bishop f8. So this now threatens to play d5. 
um, the threat here is d5, e5, and this looks bad on the surface until you realize that this pawn is pinned, you know, so this knight doesn't have to move or else this rook is going to get lost. Um, you know, white would be threatening checkmate if that knight moved, but the knight will just stay there and play this to block the checkmate. And then maybe the rook moves and then the knight moves into here or something. So back here, white plays rook to e3, just so d5 won't uh, be a pin on this pawn. h6 played by black, just giving the king a square. It looks kind of weird um, opening this diagonal, but I think black's um, anticipating white's going to push g4 and maybe try g5. So that's just kind of a prophylactic defense. And it gives the king a little escape square and, and uh, maybe if a piece ever gets to the back rank. So king h2 played by white. I, th I don't know. I think maybe this is um, compatible with the plan of playing f4 at some point so that the king won't be on this diagonal, which is a little bit weaker when f4 is played. I'm not sure. But queen c7 is played immediately. Now, this is a beginner level question. Let's say white puts the bishop on an acti active diagonal like this. What's wrong with this move? What should black play now? The problem with this move is it loses a pawn. d5 check. Discovered attack on the, black, on the white king there. Once the king moves, pawn takes on e4. And this pawn can't be recaptured, so black wins a pawn. So you need to do something about this location of the queen pointing at our king. And what's played in the game is f4, blocking that diagonal with the pawn. So if this move's played, now we can just play e5. All right, and at this point, black plays queen to c5. But suppose black had made some pointless passing move, and it were white to move here again. What would you play as white? This is an advanced position. The strongest move here is knight to e2. We're threatening to take on f6, and this would be very bad for black bad pawn structure, weak king. So what can black do about it? If you try bishop e7, we're going to go e5, threatening to come in here. And, you know, takes, takes with the bishop hitting the queen. Next, we're going to take the knight, and then we're going to come in here. So this is not working for black. What else can be tried? You can go queen to d8, try that, but then takes, takes, again, e5. The queen can go here, but then we go takes, takes, and this is an intermediate position. What would you play as white? e6 is the killer move here, hitting that bishop. OK, so you move the bishop, then you take and hit the rook. And you got to try to stay in front of that pawn. But you go here, check, here, and then OK. So we're not winning a ton of material immediately, but we just have a crushing position with these advancing pawns. Yeah, black is super passive right there. That's bad. What else can be tried back here? Um, after this knight e2, you can try e... Let's see, wait a minute here. You try knight h5, moving the knight. e5 again. It just e5 is like the response to everything. g6 can be played now. But now we go here and we're threatening this check because this pawn's pinned. So maybe bishop to f5 played now. And then we go ahead and take on d6. And you can give up your queen like that, but then this is a major problem here. If You can't take the rook, so the rook, let's say, goes in front, and then we take here, and yeah, this is just going to be the end. All right, so that that's what the threat is. All right, so queen c5 addresses that, because now if you try knight e2, we got bishop b5. So knight e2 is not played. Instead, bishop to d1. And now... The queen goes to a5. Okay, hitting this pawn, I guess. Bishop b3 defends. Queen goes over to h5. Oh, yeah, bishop d1 back here, by the way, was trying to keep the queen out of h5. That's what that was all about. Then the queen just goes here and attacks the pawn, so bishop b3. Now the queen gets to h5. And now, if white were to do nothing and it were black to move again, this is a beginner level position, what should black play? Knight g4 check. This pawn is pinned. Can't move, or the king will be in check. Forking the rook and king. So that's a winning tactic. White obviously sees that and goes king to g1. And now, queen to c5 again. 
Okay, so let's play here queen e2. Let's suppose it's again black to move. This is a tactic. Now that the queen went to c5, there's a tactic available for black. It's not a winning tactic, but just see if you can calculate the entire line. It looks like black can win a pawn, but then like white can get the pawn back. What would you play as black? There's knight takes e4. This is equal according to the computer, but this is, it's important to be able to see this stuff. Rook takes e4, bishop f5. This rook is pinned to the queen. So it looks like white might be in trouble, but this is an intermediate level position now. What should white play? The only move that will save white is bishop takes f7 check, king takes, queen b3 check, and then the, the pawn blocks, and then we take the rook. That's the best, best uh, variation, I guess. And in this position, it was equal, according to the computer. But anyway, queen e2 was played to avoid that pin. And now we have knight h5 hitting this f4 pawn. So f5 is played. And um, this blocks the queen's defense of the knight. So now this knight is under attack by white's queen. Knight f6 is played. King h1 is played, just getting the king off of that sensitive diagonal, I guess. Now bishop e7 looking to reroute to this diagonal, which is going to be a little better right here. It's just staring at a pawn. So white plays knight to c2. The bishop goes over here. Okay, bishop d4. That was the point of knight c2. Bishop d4 attacking the queen. And then the queen goes over here. And it was important to move this bishop to have this open here because after this queen b5 move, which is what black wants to play after queen takes, bishop takes, looks like white grabs a pawn, but since that file's open for the rook, now black gets the pawn on e4. And now we have bishop d5 and bishop to f6. That's the best move for black. Suppose black had tried this knight f6 though. Rook takes. Bishop takes. Now here, what is the best move for white? This is an advanced position. Bishop to c6. White is winning here. Okay, so let's look at all the lines. Bishop to a5. We're going to take on e8. Bishop takes b4. Okay, bishop takes here. Bishop takes b4. Bishop goes back to c6. And then we're threatening to take the knight and mess up the pawn. So the knight, black's going to have to do something about that. And then we go g4. And if the knight moves, then the knight's too far away from this pawn and it's a problem. White's winning, I guess. Um, if instead knight takes e8, we go knight c6, hitting the bishop. The bishop tries to move. There's this bishop b6. And I guess this is just really good for white because this pawn's moving too fast and these pieces are supporting it very well. Um... If instead after here, bishop takes c6, we got knight takes, the bishop's hit, so here, and then we just take. Yeah, that's the line where we just mess up the pawns, and black's pawns are too weak. And this probably, the king's too far away from this pawn as well. Um, so, anyway, bishop f6 was the best move, I believe. Bishop takes. Now we have knight f2 check. Black's going to get this rook, but it's okay. King h2, rook takes, and now the bishop gets out of danger, attacking the rook. The rook goes to e2, and we got bishop f3, attacking the rook again. If, let's say, rook d2, this is a beginner level position, what would you play as white? Bishop c3, attacks the rook. Black's going to have to give back the exchange, so... Black's going to have to go here where the rook has some protection. Then bishop takes. Bishop takes. And then a4. And it's looking kind of scary. This pawn's moving pretty quick. Maybe black can survive this, though. But black doesn't go to d2. Black goes to e4 instead. Thinks that this is a more fav favorable way to give back the, uh, the exchange. What if you went up here? Well, the problem is that knight is going away. So the rook had to go here and counterattack, so that if the bishop takes like this, black gets the knight and is winning. So we have to take the, the rook, the knight takes. Okay, now we, we're getting to an end game here with not very many pieces. And it's a dead draw. 
but some accurate play is required. We have some maneuvering. The bishop hits the knight. The knight goes to b4, protecting this pawn. Knight c5, a3, just kind of pushing the pawn a little bit. F6 so that the king can move and that pawn doesn't get captured. Okay, white's getting his king into the action. Black's getting the king into the action. Bishop e3. Um, maybe going to go to f4. I think also thinking about this and this, putting the knight to d4. Yeah, this is what happens. Knight c2, bishop here. Knight d4, okay. Bishop here. King to f4. Bishop goes down here. Knight goes here. What was played in the game was bishop c4, but suppose bishop takes h3 is played. This is an, uh, I suppose this is an intermediate level position. What should white play? White could win with bishop takes c5, d takes c5, knight e3. All that bishop's squares are cut, cut from its, uh, it can't go there, what I'm trying to say. And then, you know. King g3 is coming, and that bishop's going to be trapped. So, it's the end of the line for black, but that's not what was played. Bishop c4 played. And here, the players agreed to a draw, because it's it's a dead-drawn position. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found it instructive. Uh, if you guys like these, I might do more of these kind of videos. So give me some feedback, and thanks for watching.